Hey homeschool friends, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a video where I take you through the program I am using for my kindergartners this year. And I absolutely love it. We've been using it for about a month and it's been amazing. So the two programs I'm gonna to highlight today are the Sunlight HBLK, which is Intro to World Cultures, as well as the Sunlight Science K, which is Ecosystems, Meteorology, Physics, and Engineering Design. You guys, these are two really fun programs. And so my goal for this video is to just kind of take you through all the resources, take you a bit through the instructor's guide, just give you my take on how we use this program with my five-year-olds. So let's do that. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back, all the things. And so I'm really excited to be sharing my sunlight program with you guys. I'm really excited that my twins are loving it so far. I do want to make the quick disclaimer that some of these materials were gifted to me by sunlight. I mean, not all of them, but some of them. And I'm just so very, very thankful to be working with them to give you my honest review on the materials that we are using this year. And so to hop in to this flip through. It's not a review because we haven't used it in its entirety yet. I've used aspects of this program because this program is new as of 2023. And so it is labeled HBLK. In a previous video that I made, HBLK meant American history. They recently switched this to make the kindergarten year be the intro to world cultures and the first grade year be the American history. So I'll be doing that next year with my twins, but this year is where we are starting although I have read all the read alouds with my big kids. And so I have some experience with this program, but I haven't done any of the history, Bible or science. So it's really good. So let me just start with all the books, you guys. So if you have at all been curious about using sunlight, I feel like this program is one of the best ones to start with. I mean, I've liked all of their programs, honestly, but I feel like this is where I wish I would have started when my oldest was in kindergarten. I really think this would have been just perfect for him. And so, like I said, it's intro to world cultures. So that's what the history is focusing on. And I like that because really at these ages, you can't be too detailed. You're really just trying to get them excited. So here are the resources for the history section. So there's the Esborn Children's Encyclopedia. Now, we've had this copy for ages. It is so taped up and everything, but it still works and we still love it. And it has all of these quick links, which are great for these ages because it's just like little videos. So we're using this and a lot of times it'll bring you to kind of spreads like this where you're looking at the French finery, for instance. And so the Esborn Encyclopedia. This is also one that we pull out quite often and that's the Usborn book of living long ago. So this is everyday life through the ages. And again, you are focusing in on small snippets, but you're focusing on little things like clothes and houses and food and things like that across like Rome and middle ages and like Vikings and things like that. So that's a really fun one. My kids have liked that. Actually, one thing that they've really liked that we've already read and finished is this one. So it was a little A to Z mysteries book when we were in the ancient Egypt section of history and it's the missing mummy. They just love this. It's just a quick, cute story. So since then we have pretty much taken out all the audiobooks of the A to Z mysteries so they can listen to them because they're not reading, but they really like the stories. And then this is one we are just now starting. It's Game on Ancient Greece. It's reminding me a little bit of like the Magic Treehouse books where the kids are accidentally transported back into time, but there's so much on each page and it's just really fun to zero in on it. And my twins really like it. And then we have this story, which we haven't got to yet. This feels a little later in history. And so this is Out of Darkness, the story of Louis Braille. So this obviously tells the story of the little blind boy that developed the Braille language. It looks and sounds so good. And then we have these two, which are technically in the history section. At least that's where you'll find the assignments in the instructor guide. But I also feel like they overlap with Bible because it's Sunlight and Sunlight is very much a Christian homeschool company, which I probably should have mentioned at the beginning, but I feel like a lot of you know what Sunlight's about. But anyway, this one is called The Good News Must Go Out, True Stories of God at Work in the Central African Republic. And so this is a pretty decent sized book. It has a few pictures, but mostly it's just a chapter book. Same with this, Return of the White Book, True Stories of God at Work in Southeast Asia. So these will be great. My twins really do love sitting for the missionary stories. We've read all the ones from the 
preschool and pre-K programs and they sit in on a lot of the missionary stories for the big kids and so they really like that. And then to move, I guess, then to the Bible since I'm kind of segueing that way. They do have this Bible storybook, the Ergemeyer's Bible storybook book is the one that is scheduled for HBLK. And it's scheduled, I believe, to cover the whole thing in a year. And it's quite a bit of reading, but the pictures are beautiful. I've heard wonderful things about this book. I'm currently not using it only because I'm using two different HBLs and it's just a little much, but I'm contemplating bringing it back. Maybe we can use it as kind of our nighttime reading with my twins. I'll keep you posted. But anyway, that is the Bible for HBLK. Now, HBL, so the literature. So a lot of these I have read with my older kids, but they're fantastic. So I'm going to take you through the current selection. Now these things do change because I actually do have two books that were taken out when they switched A and K to make this new version of the HBLK. But I have these books and so what I love is these will be summer readers or I'll just sub in for one of these books if I don't feel like my twins are liking it. But let me just show you which these are. That's Lulu and the Dog from the Sea by Hilary McKay. And then this one is Virat Mackerel's Brilliant Plot by Anna Branford. So these two, my big kids liked. I feel like my daughter liked them more than my son. But to move on to the rest of the lit books, classic, such a good one. I actually think my twins might have listened to this already on audio because we often listen to this one, but it's My Father's Dragon by Ruth Stiles Gannett. Oh, it's such a good book. It's about this little boy who rescues a dragon on this island and he has kind of all these adventures on the island. It's really quick. It's full of lots of good pictures. Even though they're black and white, they're, it's very engaging. This was actually the first book I read to my bigger kids when they were five years old and four years old. So I already know it's perfect for this age. We also have A Grain of Rice. So this was good. The subtitle says, the smallest of rewards can grow into the largest of treasures. So this is a very good story. It's about this farmer who is trying to win the emperor's daughter and he does it using math. It's quite clever and it's really fun. So this is a book that I have not read yet because it wasn't part of the old HBLK. And this is Franklin Endicott and the Third Key. And this is by Kate DiCamello, which I love her books. And so I'm really excited to try this. It looks pretty quick and a few pictures in there. So that looks good. Oh, this book, Roxy and the Hooligans. This is by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. So this is such a cute book and we still have a number of inside jokes in our family because of this book. It's about this girl who's kind of being bullied and then accidentally ends up on this island with the bullies and then some things happen and she has like this uncle who's like this famous like adventurer or something like that and he has this rule of rule number one, do not panic. And she says it all the time in this book and so a lot of times with my kids, I'm always like, rule number one. And they're like, do not panic. It's really cute. And then there's this book. So this is called Just Dance by Patricia McLaughlin, which is the author of Sarah Plain and Tall. And this is, this is a cute book about this mom who used to be like more famous. And then she gave that up for her family. And it's kind of her children learning that. And it's, it's really sweet. So we like that. And then Boxcar Children. This is the first one. My kids have already listened to so many of these, but it'll still be fun to read the initial one with my twins. And then A Silver Balloon. I remember reading this. I really liked this by Susan Bonners. It's just a sweet story of this boy who sends out this message on this balloon and then he gets an answer back. And it's just really sweet. There's some kind of sweet science stuff going on and I really liked it. And then Anna Hibiscus is so cute. So this is a story about a little girl who grows up in Africa and just the little adventures she gets up to and her family, her big family. And she has this set of twins. And that's what my older kids loved about this book is there was twin brothers or twin babies involved and they had their twin brothers who were babies at the time that we read it. So it was just really perfect for our family. And then the adventures of the South Pole Pig this is cute. This is likened a lot to Charlotte's Web, another pig. In this case, there's a pig who wants adventure and ends up on this expedition to the South Pole. Some things happen. It's longer. I really liked it. I thought it was really, really cute and adventurous. And the main character, the pig, overcomes some things which are just sweet. And then, oh, I love these books. 
The Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. So my kids have yet to really get into these books. I have offered them as like read alouds, but we've only read this book. So I only read this to the big kids. So I'm going to be reading this to my twins and I'm hoping it could spur on my big kids wanting to read it again because I remember as a kid I read these books and I loved them. And then some other ones. Humphrey, this is currently what we're reading. I tend to do this. It's just kind of a little helpful hint. So here's the questions. So Sunlight does include read aloud discussion questions. You won't find them directly after the week that the book is scheduled in the instructor guide. They will be back in like I think section three or section four. But here's your like discussion questions. And so I use these as a bookmark. So that way once I finish a chapter, I can look and see if, if I want to ask the discussion questions. Other times I just make up my own or I ask what their favorite part in the chapter was, things like that. And we're, so we're working our way through this book, The World According to Humphrey. It's so cute. It's about this hamster who is in a classroom in room 26 and just the antics he gets into and how he learns about the different students and their lives. And it's just really sweet and they really like it and they really want a hamster, which is what happened with my big kids too. And then this book, oh, another favorite. Guys, so many good books in this level. So Heartwood Hotel, A True Home. We already finished this book. It's about a little mouse called Mona who is orphaned, ends up like washed away due to this storm in the deep part of the woods and then finds this hotel called the Heartwood Hotel. There's all these animals and she gets taken on into the hotel and she learns some things. And it goes from there. Actually, the twins are listening to the other books because there's four books in this series. My husband's reading the rest of them to my twins because they love that book so much. And then these two. So Dolphin Adventure and Dolphin Treasure. So it starts with Dolphin Adventure and then Treasure is second. And it's a true story about this diver off the coast of Florida who finds these dolphins and gets to know them. And then throughout the book, they kind of visit each other. So I won't say more than that to spoil it, but they're really sweet. And since it's a true story, my kids really like that. And then two other books that are technically in the read aloud section are these books. So Richard Scarry's Please and Thank You. So a good manners book and then a good feelings book. There was lots of times where you could just talk about big feelings, which is definitely this age group, right? And how to handle them and what to do and what not to do and things like that. So it's a good book for that. So those are the literature books for the HBLK. So I feel like I have gone through those resources. The next thing I do want to show you is two other resources before I get to, to the instructor's guide. Okay, and so timeline books. I always get my kids their own timeline books because they can build them. They can add what they want. They can add the little stickers. We haven't gotten too many stickers in here yet. We've only put a, a few like from ancient Egypt or ancient Rome or something like that, but we have them for them to kind of get started on. And then the big markable map, which I like because there's a small map that does come in the instructor's guide that kind of is three hole punched and it, you can include it with your your guide, but then there's this markable map and I like using both or I like using the instructor guide map plus a globe either way, but it's really nice for them to be able to kind of find on here what we're talking about because they're not labeled on this big markable map and then they can use the wet erase markers and draw things they can talk about like currently we're going through Vikings with my older kids and we can talk about what countries had kind of those Norsemen and where they went and what they explored and the routes they took and things like that. So that is very helpful for not only finding things, but kind of sketching out what happened in history. So I like having that. And then to get to the last part of at least the HBL is the instructor's guides. So I didn't pull them all out of my big binder and I'm not even gonna flip the camera around because I feel like I have so many videos about the instructor's guides on my channel. I'll link some for you to take a look at, but they're all set up very similarly and they're fantastic. You can also find them on Sunlight's website. And I always have an affiliate link down below that gets you, I think, $10 off of your first order. So go check that out if you're curious. But it also will take you to Sunlight's website and you can get some of their free samples. They give out three weeks of each level. So you can search a little bit more into this, but I'm just gonna give you a bit of the basic setup. The basic setup is that you always have the week and the days across the top and you have the subjects down here and you have the Bible up top and then you have history and geography and then you have read alouds and then you have miscellaneous in terms of the HBLK. 
So this was where you will see what pages to read on what day. Now you can totally follow it like that or you could go and read all of the read aloud all at once and just mark all those days. Or you can do the history on two days and so you can read two days at once. Or you could take two weeks to do one week. I mean, it really doesn't matter how you do it. It's just all here for you. It's all scheduled and ready in kind of those perfect bite-sized pieces for this age. Because I really don't feel like this amount of work, if you were to take like day one and read it all the way down, it does not take that long, which I love about sunlight. And so you have down at the bottom in the miscellaneous is create a calendar as well as field trips and practical life skills. They'll have like using a knife or using a broom and kind of things like that. So if you go from the main grid to the next couple pages, there will be additional information and instructions for you in the first week there's a lot it really sets the stage for how to use different aspects of the program so definitely read through this but then it will kind of line out like here it says day one of the bible and here's the discussion question to ask after reading that reading so you will find your discussion questions for history within your instructor's guide and then here is the the us born living long ago create a calendar and this gives you a little bit more about field trips so all in all, it's very well laid out. It has everything scheduled for you. It has amazing books that are just sent to you. You don't have to try and find them. You don't have, I mean, you can. You can definitely do this program in a lot of different ways and people will do that. They'll find it used, they'll, they'll do a lot of things. But any way you do it, it's an amazing program that has a lot of rich literature that your kids can really dive into. And so that is the history, Bible, and literature, but I'm not done yet because I also decided to do the science with my twins. And so I wanna show you those resources as well because they're fantastic. They're so good. And my twins especially love science. They have been really enjoying the science. Let's just go through the books. So I wanna start with the first one because this is what we've already done and we really liked it. So these are the hard Usborn books and they're on just kind of a small topic. So this is Ants and it's very classic Usborn book style, but it's bigger print and there's not as much per page, but lots of good information. And so we have this one as well as Rainforests, Bees and Wasps, Weather, and Reptiles. So these are really fun and they make for really fun experiments. But we also have this book. So this is a very basic DK Find Out science book. We, we really love these books. I, I find them to be just the right amount of information and things that they can look at and that we can kind of talk through the pages. So we love those. And then you'll also have some more living books. So some stories that can make these science concepts come alive. So you have Wingari's Tree of Peace, a true story from Africa. And then you have also the forces that make things move. So that's a nice, these are the um, stage two, let's read and find out science books. And then we have from seed to plant. Oh, uh, just this, a sweet basic book and a magic school bus book. So sunlight often uses the magic school bus books and especially their early levels of science. And we love them. My, my kids can look at these for days. They just, they really enjoy these books. And then, why do elephants need the sun? So this is a well of knowledge science series. So there's a number of these books and kind of the pre, pre-K program, which we've used. And so those are great. And then it does have, I forgot to put this. I think this is scheduled in part of the literature. So it's the poetry, the llama who had no pajamas. We love these. My big kids love them. We've gone through this once and now we're doing it again with the twins and it's a huge hit. And then we also have the science experiments. All right, guys, this is fantastic. So I have a do an experiment video with my bigger kids that I can post above for you to kind of see how it works. I'm gonna do it with the twins because they're so stinking cute when they do these experiments. And these experiments are very basic. So this is the instructors guide for the science, which if you, it's like the biggest book that comes. It's the Discover and Do Science, the Kindergarten Experiments. So now they've been redoing all of their science programs. I think they're up through E now. It's fantastic. They've been adding the um, national science standards 
to the program and so it includes a lot of that kind of stuff so you're really staying up to date as well as they have included a lot more engineering and stem because that is just the direction of science and so i love that i love the fact that even within these programs they do a lot of like thinking and experimenting and redesigning and asking the kids to like put on their scientist caps and things like that that i feel like my kids really respond well to and then Here's the instructions for the experiments. And I use this, but I also love the videos. The guy's funny, the man who is in charge of the videos, I should know his name by now, but he's really good and he's really personable and the kids just laugh a lot during his presentation. And what's great is it really supports you doing this. A lot of times he'll basically do all of it and then you pause and you do it with your own stuff because the science comes with a kit of all the supplies, which I didn't bring out with me but it comes with everything you need. And if you do need to get something from your house, it'll be like a bowl and some water and whatever. I mean, it even sends you cotton balls. It doesn't even assume you have cotton balls. So I feel like it has sent me everything I need to easily do these experiments. And they're easy, they do not take long. And my kids really enjoy the tactile kind of getting in there. And it's been very on point. Like our last three weeks were on ants and then we've moved to reptiles, the reptiles book. And so now we just did one on snakes and we're gonna do one on reptiles and how they warm themselves up and there's like color changing material you add to clay so we're going to get the lizards that we're going to make out of clay to turn colors so they're just really fun and applicable and short perfect for kindergarten because i mean it's kindergarten right they need to be focusing on learning to read and do early math and so all of this stuff is more for exposure and fun and as long as it stays that way it's perfect so let me get let me get the instructor's guide for science. So this is set up very similarly with the days across and down. Then it has the book you're reading as well as the activity sheets. I just pulled over my working binder because I keep our activity sheets in the working binder so it stays with me. And they're really colorful sheets. And this one was a cut out and glue in. There's a number of that kind of cut and glue which is perfect for the kindergarten age. Here's another set of cut and glue. And otherwise I'll just read them and I'll make marks. Like I don't hand these to my kids, by no means. We very much do these together and I do a lot of the writing or I even give them the pencil and they can do like the match the things. And so it's very minimal, but it's fun to do with the kids. It's fun to see kind of how much they're learning and we, then we can talk about it and it just improves it. So I do like having those activity sheets. But the other thing I wanna highlight here is they have the experiments scheduled for that third day, so the whole day. So they basically have three days of reading, one experiment day, and then here it has the supplies, and it has supplies from the kindergarten supply kit, so it tells you what is in the kit, and then it says what you will provide. In this case, you'll provide a flat surface, plastic wrap, two books, a pencil, um, some flour, and some cooking oil for this first experiment. And then it also, what I love, is it has a planning list for the next week, and it tells you what you will need for next week in case it's like an egg or something like that and you don't normally buy eggs then you know you have to pick that up from the grocery store so it gives you that and then it also has again more information sometimes this is like the information you want to read so that you can kind of sum it up when you're talking with your kids about whatever you're reading there's a little bit more to talk about there is discussion questions if you want them and then there is the answer key which sometimes i do need not usually for the kindergarten level but definitely for the when I get up to HPLC, um, which I also did a whole like look inside flip through for that, which I can link above if you're interested in HPLC and HPLK. But that's the instructor guide for Science K. It's been really fun so far and we've really, really enjoyed it. My overall thoughts so far are it's a perfect curriculum for length of time I wanna spend on these kind of content delight interest subjects the ones that you just want to expose your kids to right it's not all that much time i know i can drop things or move things around or double things up this is the fun part of school math is not as much fun as like reading our humphrey book and talking about hamsters right so they've really enjoyed the read alouds like really enjoyed the read alouds and they've really enjoyed the science i'd say those have been the favorites so far for my kids in the past six weeks but I'm really impressed with the program. I'm really impressed that it doesn't take us a ton of time. We can easily fit it into our day. And it's just been a delight to do with my five-year-olds. So that's really what I have for this flip through. And again, if you want a closer look at the instructor guides, go through that link down below. That'll take you to the Sunlight website. 
if you have any questions for me about any of the books and my thoughts so far, please let me know because I, I love sunlight and I love chatting about sunlight. And so yes, that is what I have for this video and I hope it's been useful and fun to watch. If, even if you were just curious what is all involved in sunlight and you were just checking it out, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to. But otherwise, you guys, I'll see you in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.